So we're going to talk about how an airport incident caused a massive amount of regulatory drag and what lessons we can learn about transparency in this industry. A recap. December 2018. At approximately 21.06 Wednesday, 19th of December 2018, a drone sighting whoop, was reported to security and basically caused chaos. At 21.25, a helicopter launched from a nearby Red Hill National Police Air Services base. Members of the press arrived equipped with professional cameras and other equipment. Over the coming hours and days, drones will be reported by police, ground crew and the public. At the same time, the press would not see a malicious drone, nor would the NAS, uh, NPAS helicopter crews, nor would any pilot log an AIRPROX incident. Counter drone equipment was deployed by the police and the Royal Air Force. One of the first images in the national press of the Gatwick drone was a National Police Air Services helicopter dispatched from Red Hill. Uh, everyone see the picture of the naughty drone? So now we start getting the wild videos of things in the sky. There's another video of a police helicopter with its uh, searchlight going. To the media, it didn't matter if it was a photo, a video of a helicopter or a drone. They just started publishing stuff out. The story and the clicks were the most important. Many in the drone industry are familiar with Brendan Schulman. He is the former lawyer for DJI. Anyone who's in the public and knows anything about drones knows DJI. He's very well regarded in this industry and has actually done a lot for the industry. And he worked for DJI, but we'll ignore that bit. Um, he posted nearly straight away. Are you guys, uh, are you actually gonna use that video on the news and claim it shows a drone? It does not. If you would like to know what the drone industry has done to enhance safety near airports, we would be happy to discuss. I won't read them all, but a lot of people started feeding in that that was a police helicopter. Uh, and then we actually have the records of where the police helicopter was flying at exactly the times the police helicopter was flying over the Gatwick area. Then the media started piling in and we've got all of the media sending requests to Ed to ask if they can use the uh, information and the video, um, to which he replies, sure, although I can't say for certain this was a drone, the, con the consensus suggests it could have just been the police helicopter moving slowly over the area. So he did not continue to perpetrate that this was a drone, but the media kept going. So uh, many, many reputable uh, news organisations continue to spread that, including the BBC. Anyway, claims can be verified, other claims can't. There are actually far more photos of this guy than there are of a uh, drone at Gatwick. All right. The evidence, what evidence? There is no written description from the Department of Transport or from Civil Aviation Authority UK what the drone was supposed to look like, how it flew, fast, slow, big, small, blue, white, quad, hex, Sussex Police Official Operation Trebor Debrief does not have an actual description of the drone. Simply the vague commercial type drone. The police received, supposedly, a large number of sightings, including from many credible witnesses of what was reported as a commercial type drone. With regards to any description being provided to the Department of Transport, now, these are freedom of information um, little excerpts. These are not just random little snippets of information that were picked out of nowhere. These are from uh, this one, the Department of Transport, where they say, we do not hold any information on the description. So we've just shut down an airport. We've ruined everyone's Christmas. Um, this one is from... CAA. This is from CAA. 
We also asked a small number of key people who were involved at the time and asked them to review information they hold and to offer views as, of, as to whether they may hold anything of relevance. While this is not a comp comprehensive search, none of them believe that they are likely to hold any information regarded uh, relating to the description of a drone. As I have mentioned previously, the CAA's primary concern and the focus of our activity was to ensure that any risks to aviation activity were appropriately managed by the airport airlines and air navigation providers. So CAA, CAA also did not have a description of the drone. So, was the drone simply the police helicopter? No, it was any light that was in the sky at the time. The police helicopter was not flying at all of the times of the uh, drone incident. Uh, it could have been lights on a crane, that was reported. Uh, the police drone itself was reported a few times. Uh, a lot of aircraft were reported as drones during the time. Um, there were also police that called a report on a drone when actually it was the planet Jupiter. <laughs> All right, here's where we start getting a little bit contentious. Freedom of information, lies and videotape. So unfortunately this screen is not quite the size of screen I was hoping for. I wasn't wanting to have to read everything because uh, there's a lot to go through. Um, but basically these again are snippets of uh, freedom of information uh, requests. Uh, in FOI responses from the Ministry of Defence, it was noticed that Sussex Police are leading the investigation and have deployed their own UAV detect and warn capability to Gatwick Airport, which was prior to the arrival of MOD assets on, uh, so on 20th of the 12th, 2018. The next bit down is, is the response from the Sussex Police. Um, they talk about uh, activity and, and what they have, and they, the highlighted points are no detect, track, and identify equipment was in place at the time. Sort of the key point for this slide. At no point in the intervening period has Sussex Police sourced electronic detect and warn capability. On day two of the Gatwick incident, members of the press and the public photographed counter drone equipment under the supervision of the police on the roof of the Gatwick police station. Sussex Police will not acknowledge such equipment was in use. The bit that's most important is down here. It took a courts and tribun tribunal um, judiciary uh, tribunal case, EA 2023 0272, to actually get them to release even that information. All right, competition for everyone. Can anyone tell me what this is? No shouting. All right, ready? What is it? Hey, Roscoe. Anyone else? Is it anything else? Could it be anything else? So, just want to go back to that slide. Yeah. Obviously, I'm not a local, so I need some local opinions. Where is that? Anyone? Oh, come on, someone. All right, Gatwick. And uh, I, I mean, a bit of a giveaway, the airport in the background right there. So in good range, if it was a detectable drone, it should have been detected. Um, so the question is, if the Freedom of information answers are misleading on the aeroscope. What about the rest of it? All right, we go on to talk about the videos of the actual thing that was sent around to partners. The video evidence provided by London Gatwick Airport to the Department of Transport was poor. The Department of Transport staff managing the responses to the incident expressed how unimpressed they were. Again, a little bit hard to read on this tiny little screen. Um, not great. Not sure what anyone can do with this. They are working on better quality, apparently. 
The video had been shared as being the drone before it had been forwarded to the police to check against flight logs with their drones. I'm just resending these images off back to the DFT coordination call this morning. Appreciate if you could forward it to the appropriate police MOD officials who mentioned they had not yet had this, uh, that had sight of this. How can there be a video if none exists? Some uh, very interesting footage. I, I hope the volume is loud enough to get this. One of the most curious parts about it was that there was no filmed imaging at all of the drone, even though so many people thought they'd seen it. Um, isn't that rather strange that uh, no CCTV system, no, nobody with a, a mobile phone camera managed to pick up this device when it was uh, causing such disruption? Um, I'm not surprised. Uh, and when you consider what this looks like and how fast it moves, to try and capture that on anything, I think is fantastically challenging. And, but Gatwick Airport, I'm kind of looking behind me, is a huge area. It's a huge area. And you try and tell me what a drone, mm -hmm. half a mile away, mm -hmm. at the other end of a road runway, looks like from here. Mm -hmm. Film it on your best mm -hmm. phone that you've got and show me the footage. All right, so apparently it was going too fast to film and the area was too big to film a drone in. I was pretty sure I was filming some pretty fast drones last week um, and uh, you can film them. Doesn't mean the film's gonna be great, but you can. There were not just camera phones there. The NPAS had their military grade, high definition. Uh, what's an EO mean? I keep forgetting it. Electro-optical and, oh yeah, that's the vision stuff, the normal stuff, and the infrared imaging. The RAF with the uh, Nero, ULR, HD, EO thermal imaging. Press had high-end cameras. Commercial drones do not tend to fly too fast. Cameras can tend to see further than eyes. One of the pieces of equipment that was there was the uh, Leonardo electro-optical unit as part of the RAF's Falcon Shield. It could detect and record high resolution video of, of the drone well before it reached the runway. Now there's an image there of what a drone looks like on the thermal. They stick out like a sore thumb if you're flying them on a, uh, in front of one of those systems. Here's another video just to the side there of the MPAS tracking a drone from a helicopter. It does stand out pretty clearly against the background. The photographers there were the real expert witnesses. The idea that police officers are inherently capable of identifying objects in the sky is nonsense. Forces have confirmed a lack of drone expertise sent to Gatwick. These were non-specialist assets to assist with the, ha the house to house inquiries around the airport perimeter. They were not drone pilots. Some members of the press were drone pilots. Most were suitably equipped to identify objects at range and at night. The Department for Transport chose to redact the fact that the final drone sighting close to the airport was on day three, the 21st, and was caused by multiple police officers citing what they reported as drones, but were not confirmed by RAF or Falcon Shield. The dates of all of this is available on all of the freedom of information um, stuff that is available. As the sightings were at sunset, it is likely navigation lights on air traffic were being reported. This would explain why the sighting stopped when the traffic was diverted and grounded. The London Gatwick video appears to have been edited, losing quality from a camera phone being around uh, two seconds long. It was taken on day two, the 20th. Um, not, a, not a great shot there, but it is clearly a drone. 
So you can see it uh, flying nice and high. Uh, it's clear to any photo uh, photographer this drone simply needed a telephoto lens to see it clearly. Um, and considering the number of telephoto lenses that were there, it's amazing we don't have better footage. Despite what the Defence Committee was told, it's certainly not too fast to film. On closer inspection, it is viable that the video is a, of a DJI Matrice M210. Just weeks before, Sussex Police had, a, had, been, had been equipped with a Matrice 210. Do you think this might just be why the Defence Committee were led to believe no video existed? Well, that volume definitely worked. Uh, yeah, so that's the police's nice new toy that, they'd arri uh, that had arrived just, uh, just beforehand. And a uh, quote from Rendon. Based on my knowledge, I doubt a rogue drone was involved, but my personal views are secondary. What truly matters is that a neutral body conducts thorough investigations into such incidents, enabling informed responses to actual safety risks and to avoid overreactions to unsubstantiated claims. And that's it for the FOI side of things. Um, obviously, I'm not the guy that wrote this presentation, and there's a reason that he's not giving this talk, because we were told not to give this talk here at DroneX, um, and we were basically, he was banned from coming. So uh, on behalf of Ian Hudson, who has done an incredible job of in thoroughly investigating this uh, incident, uh, I, just, I just want people to really take seriously the effects that this incident has had on the drone industry worldwide. In Australia, we have drone regulations that are based on Gatwick. You have drone regulations here based on Gatwick. You have a uh, counter UAS police task force that was set up purely based on the fact that there was a drone at Gatwick. But if that wasn't a fact, then what was it? Like, why are we doing this? So like, why is there a why is all this regulation coming down to an industry that is yet to have a single death? Um, the, you know, people cutting their fingers on propellers is a risk of the hobby, sure, but uh, from a commercial point, this is the safest industry in the world and we are being hammered by regulation. Regulation is slowing us down. We've got our competitors, i.e. China, developing drones at a pace that is just unbelievable because they give them absolute freedom to get on with the job. Um, now, I don't know, when I grew up, I thought that China was where you weren't allowed to do things, but it feels like we're catching up. So I don't want to sound like a tinfoil hat conspiracy theorist here. So, you know, vaccine's good, just to clarify. Um, but the reality is that we can't just believe what we're told. We have to investigate it. It doesn't mean you have to go down rabbit holes of rubbish, but sometimes there's some rabbit holes worth chasing.